<clears throat> okay. We're continuing from where we left off. <clears throat> and being that tonight is a yard site, tonight is the yard site of Reb Abba, Reb Yehuda Alevi. We dedicate the learning, Lili Nishmasoi, <clears throat> and for a complete Rufu and Yeshua for all those that need it. We spoke about quite a number of topics in this Torah so far, about Emunas Hachamim, about appointing, appointing Rabonim that are not Hagunim, Chas V'Sholom. <coughs> spoke about Hamtoka Sadinim. Spoke about the Evan Shesir, the Kodesh HaKadoshim. And now Rab is making closing remarks on this Torah, very, very important closing remarks. <coughs> Based on everything we've been learning in this Torah, we'll understand the incredible significance of traveling to Tzadikim on Rosh Hashanah, for Rosh Hashanah. Ki Rosh Hashanah hu yoyma dedina shal kol Hashanah. In this Torah, he spoke about being mamtig dinim. Viradinim always. When Hashem first created the world, Bereshis bora elikim es hashmaim v'sorez. Hashem wanted to create the world just with Midas Sadin. And in the, in the end, Hashem decided to be Meshatev Midas Arachmim with Midas Sadin. But there is such a thing as Midas Sadin. We know Mondays and Thursdays. We say Vurachum, we say the extra Tachnon, <clears throat> because those are the days that ca- correspond to Gevura and Hoid. Din. There's a left side, there's a Sitra Achra. But Rosh Hashanah is Yoima Dedina Shokol Hashanah. It's the day that's koilel the midas sadin of the whole year. It's brought that we have aseres yemei tshuva. And tshuva is an Indian of, again, it's yomim noiroim. Yom, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur is called yomim noiroim, days of or noira v'oyoim. Ki hu noira v'oyoim. A, a, a time of din, yoim hadin. It's brought that Rosh Hashanah is koilel all ten, all aseres yemei tshuva. The Hashem's name Elohim, Elohim, this week's Parsha, Mishpotim, Parsha's Mishpotim, Adhu Elohim, Yovo Yidvar Shneim. Elohim is Bezdin, Mida Sadin, right? Ten times Elohim is Bigimatri or Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is Koilel, all ten levels of Din, all Aseris Yemei Tshuva, are all Nichlal in Rosh Hashanah. Vekolechod, Viechod, Bo, Im Kidushosoi, Vitzim Sumo, Velat Sadik and every single person who's coming to the tzaddik is coming with his kedusha, with his seichel, and with his tzimtzumim. Tzimtzumim means with his limitations, <coughs> and with his averois. All of those are called tzimtzum. Tzimtzum means the absence of light. Kedusha chesed is called an union of oyer, the first day of creation. Chesed vayhi oyer. Tzimtzum is the absence of oyer. Simpson is Eish, Mida Sadin. So each person is coming with his baggage, with his seichel, with his tzimtzumim. <clears throat> to the tzaddik hador, shehu bechinas kotshe kodoshim. The tzaddik hador is like the kotshe kodoshim in the Beis Hamikdash. Where does it say that? Who, who says that? It's a posik in Mishle. The posik says, yekorohi mipninim. <clears throat> that the tzaddik, the Talmud Chacham, is more precious then the lefnai v'lefnim. Pninim is lefnai v'lefnim. That when there was a Beis HaMikdosh, when there was a Kohen Gadol, one day a year, one Yid had permission to go into the Kodesh HaKadoshim and to affect the Kapora for all of Klal Yisrael. <clears throat> when there's no Beis HaMikdosh, there's one Yid, there's the Tzadik Hador, who, who is superior to the Kohen Gadol. Yekoro him more precious than the Kohen Godel, more precious than the Lefnai Velifnim. <coughs> Where the Rabbein Israel quotes the Apostle, Hamas Melech Malachi Moves, that sometimes the anger of the king, the anger of Hashem is so harsh that Yom Kippur is not Mechaper, and Tshuva is not Mechaper, and Yisurim is not Mechaper. The Gemara talks about levels, levels and levels of things that can atone for sins. There's Yisurim, <coughs> There's, Yom, there's Tshuva, there's Yom Kippur. Sometimes all three of those things don't work, only Misa Mechaperes, certain Averis. So the Gemara says, Hamas, the Pesach says, Hamas Melech Malachi Modes. And those Averis, the Ish Chacham Yechaprenon. 
Bish Chacham can even be mechaper those Averois. Even those Averois which the Kohen Gadol couldn't be mechaper for, he can be mechaper for. Bechinas Evan Shesia. In the Kodesh in the Kodesh Kadoshim, in the second base Mishnah, you had the Evan Shesia, which is the foundation rock of the world. Just like the Tzaddik is called the foundation of the world. The Tzaddik is Soid Oilam, it's a Posuk. Bibchinas, <clears throat> as the Posuk says in Shmuel Anavi, Kilashem Mitsuke Eretz, the peaks, the tall mountains of the world all belong to Hashem, Vayoshe Saleim Tevel, and Hashem spread out the whole world <clears throat> surrounding these mountains. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says in Yuma, who are these Mitsuke? What is this Mitsuke Eretz? That's the Tzadikim. Vayoshe Saleim Tevel, and Hashem founded the entire world, Vayoshe, Evan Shasia, on them. Shis, the Zohar Kodesh says the word Bereshis is Bora Shis. <coughs> Hashem created Shis, is the Evan Shasia, the foundation. Shis <coughs> is the sixth sphere, Yesoi, the Mid of Yesoi, which is the Tzadik. That's this Shis, that's the foundation of the whole world. Shehem <clears throat> HaTzadikim She'aleihem Nishta Soilam These are the Tzadikim on whom the world is founded on them. Vayideizeh Nimtokim Kol Hadinim And by Klal Yisrael, by the Yidin coming to the Tzadik for Rosh Hashanah, this makes it possible to be Mamtik all Dinim. Alidei Bechinas Evan Shesia Kanal Because he is this Evan Shesia like we explained early in the Torah, that the Evan Shasi is the place where all dinim can be nimtak. Vezeh bechinas avne Yaakov shenichlelu kulam betoich Evan Shasiya. And this concept of all the Yidden coming to the Tzaddik for Rosh Hashanah is exactly like those 12 rocks when, ya- when Yaakov Inu came to the Mokoi Mikdosh and he wanted to lay down and there were 12 rocks there and all 12 rocks gathered together and became one rock. Vayikach me'avnei ha'mokoim vayosem esh And then it says, Vayikach es ho'even vayosem oisem atzevo. Avnei became even. That's this concept of Klal Yisrael coming to the Tzaddik <coughs> for Rosh Hashanah. Ki ha'nefoshois heim b'china savonim. Because the nefoshois, the Yiddish nefoshois are called stones. As the Pesach says, Tishtapechna avnei koidesh baroish kol chutzos. When it talks in Eicha about the fact that the Goyim murdered all the Jews at that time, it says these holy stones, these holy nefoshos, were scattered in the streets. The kulom boim v'nechlolim betoich ha-tzadik And all the people that are coming to the tzaddik for Rosh Hashanah, they're coming to become part of him, to become nichlal in him. Shehu bechinas evan shesia. He is this evan shesia. Vayideze nimtokin kol hatzimtsunim. And this results in sweetening all of these tzimtsunim. I mentioned recently, it says by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechoizal, that when he had to run for his life, and he went, he ran to this Myra with his son, Rebbe Lazar, and Hashem made a miracle, the Gemara says, that a tree, a boxer tree, came up, Charuv, and, and a Mayon Mayim, and that's what they subsisted on. So the Ben Ishchai asks, Vus, what, what, what is this all about? He says, Hashem wanted to show them what their mission is, what their mission statement is. Charuv is Begimatria Gvura, Mayim is Meimei HaChesed. Your mission is Hamtoka Sadinim, that the Chesed should be Mamtik the Dinim. That's your Avoida here, those 12 years, those 13 years of Sisrei Torah. Now, what's it all about? It's, it's the avoid of Rosh Hashanah. It's, it's the Hamtoka Sadinim. That's the avoid of the Tzadikim. To be Mahapech Mida Sadin to Mida Sarachman. Like Yitzchok and Rivko, when Yitzchok was Mispawel, it says, Vayetar Yitzchak Lenoi Chachishtoi. So Rashi says that one of the taiches of Ayetar is a pitchfork. What does a pitchfork do? It turns over the hay. Just like the tefillos of tzaddikim turn around Hashem's midas sadin to midas rachmin. It's being mamtik these tzimtzumim. Vayideizeh shenechlolim yachad kol hanefoshes kanal. And by all of these nefoshes coming and joining together, 
becoming united, this generates simcha, that the light of tzaddikim brings simcha, because every single nefesh is a ner, ner Hashem nishmas odom, and when these neirois join together, nasamiem oyer, it becomes a fire, a light, a big light. So again, this is part of the avoid of Rosh Hashanah. It's this achdus. It's coming. It's kibbutz. It's joining together. We find by Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, Bechir Shabavos, Tite Nemes Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu, it's brought, represents the third Beis Amikdosh. The first two Beis Amikdoshes were able to be destroyed because it's not Emes, it's not the third one. It's not Emes, the Gemara says, Kushta Koi. Emes, every letter of the word Emes has two legs, it stands strong. Emes is indestructible. Something that's not that Rama of Emes, the first two Beis Amikdoshes, which were connected Avram Yitzchak, were able to be destroyed. <clears throat> now you have Yaakov Avinu, and he's about to leave, he's at the climax of his career. He's about to leave the world, Tachlis Hashlemus, and, and he gathers the Shvotim around him, Shifte Ko, that Hashem put his signature on every one of these Shvotim. Horo Uveini, Hashemoini, Havis. And he says, we're ready, we can bring Mashiach. And he sees the Shekhinah leaves him. So he thinks, maybe, maybe, this is an Olam HaSheker. Maybe they're fooling me. Maybe they're not such tzaddikim. So they scream, Shema Yisroel Hashem Elkein Hashem Echod. Just like in your heart, it's Echod. By us, only Echod. So they are tzaddikim. Vos failed. What's missing? So Rav Nosan Zal says, look at the next word. Right after that, he says, he kovtsu v'shimu b'nei Yaakov, v'shimu First he said, he osfu. Then he said, he kovtsu. What's the difference? An asifa is asifa hadayarim. An asifa of, of, of people in one, teachers in a school is called asifa. Or people living in the same building is called an asifa. Kibbutz is nidochen. Kibbutz is, Yaakov Avinu thought, we have 12 tzaddikim here, shifteko, we can bring Moshiach. The Shekhinah left, he saw that's not enough. It's, a, it's going to require a lot of Yidin, a lot of Yidin coming together, Yachad. Vayhibi Shur and Melech, Besasef Rosh Yachad Shifte Yisrael, coming together and, and being Nichlal in the Tzaddik. That's what's going to do it. I just saw recently in the Kutel Chas where he brings from the Arizal. The Arizal, 500 years ago, the Arizal told his Tamidim, we're ready. We're ready to bring Moshiach now. We're going to go to Yerushalayim to be Mekabal Pnei Moshiach. It says that an, an argument broke out among the, wi- the wives, there was Machloikis, and it went to the town, and the Arizal said, we lost it. It cannot be anymore in this door. Now we're 500 years later, and Moshiach hasn't, imagine 500 years ago, there wouldn't have been an Inquisition, there wouldn't have been a, there wouldn't have been a Shoya, there wouldn't have been a World War I, a World War II, and, and what was missing? What was missing was this yachad. What was missing was the yachad. Coming to the tzaddik and yachad. That could have done it. We just had kriyas, we just had matan Torah, Parshas Yisroi. How did matan Torah come about? Vayichan shom Yisroel neged ohor. Rashi says, ke'ish echod echod. And Rashi says there, not like all the other chaniyos. Not like all the other times when it was with Tlunois and Machloikis. That's what Rashi says there. Tlunois and Machloikis, no Matan Torah. The one time that they were able to get together, that there was Vayichan, Matan Torah, the greatest Hisgalus that happened so far from, from Sheshe Simei Bereshis, through this Vayichan. <clears throat> so the Rebbe, Rebbe, the Rebbe write, that's Rosh Hashanah. That's Rosh Hashanah. Everybody coming together to the Tzaddik. This is by the Idra, where Reb Shimon is talking to his Talmidim, <coughs> and he's talking about Rabbi Akiva and his Talmidim, and he says that it says in the beginning of the Novi there by Chavakuk, Hashem Shomati Shimacho, I heard your Shmir, and I was filled with Yira. 
Kamon Yoos Havi Lamidcho. That was a time for Yira. That was a time for Yira. Ki Chavakuk Oma Nevuah Zua, Rabbi Akiva Vechaveirov. Chavakuk was saying this Nevuah about what he saw was going to happen to Rabbi Akiva and his Chaveirim. Shemesu al yidei shelo yihoyo bohem ahava. They died not because they didn't go to the mikvah and not because they didn't get up for chatzois. They, they died because there wasn't ahava between them. Kamoy Shomra Zalai, the Gemara says clearly in Yevomis. Ki heim hoyu bechinas gevurois v'tzimtsunim because they were gevurois. Rabbi Akiva was a ger tzek. Rabbi Akiva ben gerim. He comes from gerim. And the Zohar Kodesh says, Geir is called Geir Tzedek. Tzedek is an Indian of Gvura, it's Malch, Malchus. Tzedek, 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 Tedabeirun, Tzedek, Lavoshti. Tzedek is Malchus or Kadisha. They were an Indian of Gvura, and Tzimtzumim, Veloi Nichlelu Yachad. And there wasn't Ahavo. The Rebbe brings the word Ahavo as Bigematria Echod. Ahavo, when there's Ahavo, there's Echod. There wasn't Ava, there wasn't Echot, so the Dinim weren't Nimtak. So that's why there was a Magefa. 24,000 Tamil. Why 24? What is 24? 24 is Mida Sadin. Hashem's name, Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, has Chof Dalet Sirufe. Chof Dalet Sirufe Adni, corresponding to the 24 Bote Dinim in Shamayim. Dinim, Gvurois, that weren't Nimtak. Everybody died. V'Rabbi Shimon v'Chaveirov shohoyu atikin shelohem, and Rabbi Shimon and his chavraya they were the tikin for this. Omar Rabbi Shimon said, Anan bechavivusa talia milsa. Our hatzlocha is totally in in this ahava, this ahava between us. Haynu bechinas ahava v'klolos klolius. That they all join together. The Zohar Kodesh says that when Rabbi Shimon said Yidra, <coughs> he told them all to hold hands. What is this? Kindergarten? Hold hands? Not kindergarten. This is, this is, he was going to reveal the deepest secrets of Torah. And in order for that to happen, there had to be this incredible achdus. This incredible achdus. I mentioned recently that before Parshas Yisroi, before Yisroi, there's Bishalach. The last, <clears throat> the last parsha in Beshalach is Melchemes Amolek. How did, how did Moshe Rabbeinu go out to fight Amolek? He says to Yeshua, Bechar Anoshim, pick people. And, is that what he said? No, no. He said, Bechar Lonu Anoshim, pick for us people. This is, what's the Lonu? What is Lonu? What, choose people, select people who are ready to go out to war. Rashi says, Lonu, Hishve Esatzmoi Litalmidoi. That Moshe Rabbeinu made himself equal to Yeshua. Us, us, you and me, you and me. This is the sun, this is the moon. Moshe Rabbeinu is the Chama, Yeshua is the Levana. They're billions of levels apart, billions of. Le- Moshe Rabbeinu is going out to do Melchama against Amalek. He knew that the only way they're going to be Matzliach is if there's an Achdus. How far? We're going to take the sun and the moon, and we're going to we're going to be mash for them. We're going to be mash for them, <clears throat> and then he, Yeshua goes out to handle the physical Muhammad and Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron and Hur go up on the giver. The Medrash says, "Hine matoi v'umanoim sheves achim yachad." Sheves achim yachad. What's gam? Shev, how good and sweet it is when brothers sit together. When brothers said, also, to, what's the also? Gam l'rabois ha Gam is always the shechina. Va'af gam zois b'yoysam b'eretz o'yveya. So Hashem says, when there's achtus, am there, count me in. Gam yachad is b'gimatria alef dalet nun yud. The, so, and, and the Medrash says, what is achim, aharoim, chur, Yehoshua Moshe? That's how Moshe Rabbein is going to do Melchama against the most powerful enemy. Rashis Goyim Amolek. Amolek is koilel all the ra of all the Shivim Umois. How's he going to do it? Bechar Lonu Anoshim and Achim. And Achim. That's Azoikim and Ainim and Amolek. How do we know? How did Mordechai and Esther, how did they win against Amolek? Leich Kenois Eskola Yehudim. The first step. 
before anything, before mikveh, before leich kenoises kol ayehudim. And then, v'tzumu alai v'altov atishtu, leich kenoises kol ayehudim, because Haman's taina was, am mefuzor a mefoyrod. There's pirod, there's pirod. Am mefuzor a mefoyrod, we can win. Achashver said to me, you're a mishigana. So many other people tried this and they weren't matzliach. Why do you think you're going to be matzliach? So he said, I'll tell you why. I'm mefuzor or mefoyra, this period. Achashver said, you're right. You're right. Oy bazoy, we can win. But then when Mordechai and Esther were able to accomplish leich kenoises kol yehudim, that was the end. That was the mapol of Homon and Amolik and, and everything. V'zeh b'chinas chodi Rabbi Shemoyim. And that's why the Zohar Kodesh says, that Rabbi Shimon was Someach, it's the Simcha. Hainu Bechinas has Simcha Shenase, Alidei HaKlolus Ava. This is the Simcha that's generated when a lot of Yidin get together with this Ava. Bechinas Oyer Tzadikim Yismoch. That when the light of the Tzadikim is shining properly, when a lot of Neiroids got together and they made an Oyer, that results in this Yismach. Yismach is the Oisius Moshiach. Yismach is Moshiach. What does that mean, Chadi? To chodi rejoice. rejoice. Chadi in Aramaic, and Aramaic means Samech, who, who Samach. Now Rabbi Shimon said, Posach v'yomar, Hoylech rochil megale soid, that he was going to reveal tremendous secrets of Torah, and he warned his Talmidim that one of the worst forms of Pegama Bris is when a person is megala soy, the person takes a secret, something that's supposed to be tsanua hidden, and he's megala it chas v'shalom. Hoylech rochil, the less ruche rucha de kiyuma. Hoylech rochil means a person <coughs> whose ruach doesn't have a kiyum. Hainu ruach chachma. He doesn't have a ruach chachma. V'loy hava mehemna, and he, and the person isn't trustworthy. He's not a neman. Hainu emunas chachonim. These two inyonim, which the Rebbe spoke about in this Torah, chachma, the sichliim with which were mamtik the dinim, and emunas chachonim, by which a person is able to draw mishpetei emes and yeshorahs from the Torah. Kalidei shein boy emunas chachonim, ein boy ruach chachma. Because when a person doesn't have emunas chachonim, he doesn't have ruach chachma, he doesn't have chachma, he can't be mekabel chachma from, from the chachonim. <coughs> like the Gemara says, that a person who's malig al divrei chachamim, his punishment is moisrois. And moisrois means the moisrois, when a person eats, the moisrois from the achil go up to the brain and they cloud his brain so he can't think straight. He can't come to the emes. Megalesoid. Megalesoid zebechinas bitul ksav yodenu. The Rebbe spoke in this Torah earlier. <coughs> he spoke about uh, that 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 the, what makes us, what sets us apart from all the Goyim is the fact that all the Goyim will see that we have a Chochma that they don't have. And Rabbi Nuzal spoke about this Chochma of the Soit Ho'ibor, which we have to be able to show the Goyim that we have it, and yet we can't reveal the secret to them. You have to sh- they have to be able to know that we have it, and yet we're not telling them what it is. We're not showing them what it is. Sh- and and, and Rabbi Nezal said, if, when, when that's accomplished, then our ksav yad is powerful. And chas when we don't have this soid ho'ibur, or when we reveal what we're not supposed to, then that weakens our ksav yad, and it strengthens the ksav yad of the goyim, where they can issue all kinds of decrees, of the, they're in control chas She'ein mekablim oyer ha'seichel miyedei ha'smicha kanal. Rabbi Nezal spoke about in the in the Torah earlier. He spoke about that just like writing is done with the hands, smicha giving over the Torah from one door to the next is done through smicha, which is also with the hands, trans transmitting the chachma through the yodayim. We know the letter yud is chachma. Oz Yoshir Moshe, the ten fingers giving over the chachma. And when a person is which means he speaks against the Chachomim, 
that causes a mistake, that causes the secret that shouldn't be revealed to become revealed. <clears throat> and this causes the oyer hasechel to chas v'shalom leave. And the Pesach continues, Besoid ami lo They will not be included in the secrets of my nation. That's people who reveal secrets that they're not supposed to reveal. Venemon ruach mechasedovor. Who's a person who's trustworthy? A person who covers up, who knows how to cover up what they're supposed to cover up. A person who knows how to keep a soy. Rabbi Shimon, his mission in the world was to, to teach Saida Satoira. And these secrets he taught to Talmidim who he knew were worthy of being number one who had the Amunas Chachomim, they had the Achtus, they had all the Milas, all the Tikunim, and they were Shoimer Habris. They knew how to keep a secret. They knew what, what to be Megala, what not to be Megala. The Ispe Rucha de Kiyuma. That person has a ruach that's lasting. How? Through emunas chachamim, the person knows. Emuna neemon means trustworthy. A person you can trust. You can trust him because he knows what to talk, what to what to reveal, what not to reveal. Bechinas al kapayim kiso oir. The, the kapayim, the yedei hasmicha, the yedei haksiva, all the things that Rabbi Nezal spoke about in this Torah, covered up the light, meaning protected the light from being damaged or harmed in any way. This was a long Torah that we covered in, in maybe seven, six, seven sessions. So again, he's pulling things together now. If you look back from the beginning of the Torah, you see how all of this comes together. Any questions? The answer is that everything is relative to what we're talking about. I'll give you an example. Shabbos is called Shabbos. Mal Shabbos is Malchus. Yismechu be Malchuscha Shoimre Shabbos vekoyre Yoyne. Malchus is the last one, the lowest one of all the Midois. It's the lowest. The less Lomigar Maklum. It has nothing. <clears throat> How could it be that the six days of the week, Friday is Yesoid, Sunday is Chesed, they are so much higher. The answer is that Malchus is Koilel, all the things above it. All of those, there's a Pasuk, Kol Hanacholim, Hoyl Chemelayam. All streams feed into the sea. So the Zohar Kodesh says, El Hayam is Eloikim. Eloikim is one of the names of Malchus, Eloikim Malki Mikedem. All streams, all the different lights feed into the Malchus, and the Malchus is koilel, all of them put together. <clears throat> Shabbos is, we compare it to the Menorah in the Beis HaMikdosh. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, lean in towards the Shabbos that's coming. On Wednesday morning, in the Shir Shalyoim, we say Lechun Ranana. We say the three first psukim of Kabbalah Shabbos, showing that we're going towards Shabbos now. 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, receive from the previous Shabbos. So where is Shabbos? Shabbos is in the middle. Shabbos is the middle candle of the menorah. All other six candles are nichna to it. In the Ushpizin, the Litvisha people, the other, other people, they, they say Ushpizin, Avram, Yitzchok, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, Aaron, Vedovid. But Al Pi Kabbalah, it's Avram, Yitzchok, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, Vedovid. Moshe Rabbeinu is the middle candle. He's the middle. He is Koilel, all of them, all of them. Now, each tzaddik, Moshe Rabbeinu, was, it was tzaddik yesoid. Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, Hashem said to him, Va'ato poi amoidi modi. He was the tzaddik who was told to be poirish, not for, to be poirish from his own wife. Such a Ramah of Kedusha of Tikkun Abris, that at a certain point in his life, not even a Kesha with a wife, only a, the Shekhinah was his wife. So Moshe Rabbeinu... Exactly, Mishisiru, Mishis, Mishisu, a hundred percent, and 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 Moshe Rabbeinu was he was the one who prepared the Yidden for Matan Torah with three days of of precious. Moshe Rabbeinu is the epitome of Yis. Moshe Rabbeinu is koilel everything, 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 depending on what we're talking about at a given time. Yosef had tzaddik. The word Yosef is bigimatria two times lechem, lechem mishne, double portion. Eretz Yisroel is called Lochein Ba'atzon Mishnah Yisroel, a, 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 an incredible shleimus. All of, or each one of the Midois is koilel all of the Midois. Depending on what we're talking about, depending on how we're looking at it at a given time, this is favoring this. But Yosef HaTzadik, the Rashi says in Chumash, Eile Toildois Yaakov Yosef. These are the children of Yaakov. You want to know who all the children of Yaakov were? Yosef. That he gave over all of his chachma to Yosef HaTzadik. And, and Mamish Yosef is Gufu Brischat. We're told that Tiferes and Yesoid are one. Gufu Brischatu. They're both represented by the Vov. So Emes, Emes, which is the Tachlis, Yaakov is called Bechir Sheba Avos. That, that's Yosef HaTzadik also. The, if the more and more you're going to learn Sifrei Hasidus and Sifrei Kabbalah, you're going to see that it's all one. It's all really one. But, but we're looking at it from different angles sometimes and different ways. And relative to a particular discussion and relative to a, t- a certain scenario, sometimes it's going this way and sometimes that way, that kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you. What, one, one other, just a quick question. But when, by Mechem Samalik, was there any period or any indication that there was a period in Kala Yisrael before Mechem Samalik, and that was what, what brought on Amalek? It, it says, Vayisu may refidim, may refidim. And, and the Gemara says, Rafu Yodom. Rafu Yodom from the study of Torah. Uh, uh, Rash, Rashi just said in Chumash, Rashi said that all, but uh, only by Matan Torah was it Vayichan. Rashi says there, Kishad Vayivachot, Rashi says, Vechol Shar Chaniyos, all the other times when they rested, it was with Tarumois and Machloikis. Yeah, I guess I was asking though, because that Rashi that says, Rafi Deim Shal Torah, it sounded like a Mole came on more because of a Torah issue more than a, a, a period issue. That was a factor. That was definitely a factor. But again, we see by Rabbi Akiva's Talmidim that with the Torah, if there isn't an Achtus, then the Torah becomes Ribu Yoyer. Rabbi Nelson Zal explains in the Kut HaLochas, Rabbi Akiva was such a high level of Torah that you needed billions of Kalim to be able to contain that light. <clears throat> and the only way you could generate that many Kalim is when people are united. Because one plus one is not two in Kedusha. One plus one becomes four. It's factorial. It goes in factorial. And each additional person that comes multiplies the number of batim. So in order to receive the light of Rabbi Akiva, they needed billions of batim. Had they connected, they would have made all of those batim. They could have received the light in a positive way. Because they weren't connected, and that trillion volts of light was given out, it, it, it blew everything to smithereens. Anyone else? Any questions? Welcome. What's the concept of tzaddik and, and, 
The, the Gemara mentions a few numbers, a few different numbers of, of tzaddikim on different levels. The Gemara towards the end of Sukkah <coughs> speaks about a concept of 36 tzaddikim who are on a certain <coughs> very high level where they, a certain closer level to Hashem than others. Now the Zohar Kodesh quotes a pasuk, there's a pasuk cholak libam, their heart was divided, was split. Who is the heart of Klal Yisrael? The tzaddikim. The tzaddikim are the heart. And the Zohar Kodesh says the word libam is 72. So the Zohar Kodesh says that there are 72 tzaddikim in the generation, 36 in Eretz Yisrael and 36 in Chutz Loretz. There are different numbers used for, the, you know, but it, and, and each one of them is a koyach. Each one of them is a tremendous power. But we know Rabbi Nezal speaks about a tzaddik who is koilel. Moshe Rabbeinu, who is koilel all the others, or a tzaddik hadoyer, who is koilel all the other tzaddikim. Okay, we can start the next Torah. The next Torah, Samach Beis, <coughs> is Loshen Rabbeinazal, meaning that Rav Nosenzal copied over, Rabbeinazal gave him his notes, and he copied, copied over the actual notes that Rabbeinazal had written. Vayase velikim esom, talking about <clears throat> when the Yidin came out of Mitzrayim, instead of going a, a direct route towards Eretz Yisroel, Hashem took us on a very circuitous route, very going around, 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 to avoid going through the land of the Pelishtim, because the Pelishtim were leitzen, and Hashem was afraid. <clears throat> the Gemara says one leitzonis can destroy a hundred or a thousand toichochos. And with all the miracles that they saw at Kriyas Yamsuf and, and, and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Chas Vashon, a person makes a joke sometimes about Yiddishkeit, about Yiddish, about, that can destroy all of that. <clears throat> so now Rabbi Nezal begins, Da, you should know, Shalidei Achilosom Shal Yisroel, Nase Yich, yes. Yes? That you want to oh, yes, yes. Wow, I forgot. I forgot, yes. On, on this Torah that we just finished, Torah Samach Aleph, it's one of the unusual places where Reb Nachman Shirin, the Pap Reus L'Chochma, goes into an incredible, incredible explanation of what was going on at the time that Rabbi Nezal said this Torah and, and how this Torah is one of the most outstanding Torahs in the whole Sefer in terms of that it's, it's a tzavo, it's Rabbi Nezal's tzavo to his Talmidim. Because at the time he gave this shear <clears throat> was when he contracted tuberculosis. Three years before he passed away, when the doctors thought he was only gonna live a couple of weeks. And miraculously, he continued for three years after that. We'll take a look for a minute. Many of you don't have the parbrois, I'll, I'll I'll, I'll translate automatically in English. We won't do the Hebrew and English. I'll, I'll give you simultaneous translation <laughs> to be able to, to hear what he's saying here. Incredible. He says, <clears throat> we already mentioned previously that this Torah was said on Rosh Hashanah, Tov Kuf Samaches three Rosh Hashanahs before Rabbi Nachman passed away. After he already had, had become very, very sick with tuberculosis, which caused his death. And, and it says already in Chaim Aran that that summer, before Rosh Hashanah, during the summer, when, when he got sick, he started talking about passing away, about dying. And he said, that he's gonna have to leave the world as a result of this sickness, that this sickness is gonna put an end to his life. And the fact that he lived more than three years after that was really with Nisim and Iflois. And Rabbi Nezal revealed immediately that he wants very much to us, for us to be involved with his kever, meaning to come, th to go there, to learn, to learn there, and to daven there and to say to him with kavona 
and with tremendous hisoyerus, with a, a passion. And that Rabbi Nezal said that he will have tremendous pleasure from this, and this will give him chilut tzatzomais. This will help his bones be able to, 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 to come to what they have to come to. And Rabbi Nezal said that if we'll do this, he will do everything possible for our toiva and for our eternal, the eternal tikkun of our nefesh. And Rabbi Nezal writes that Rabbi Nezal once said, I want to remain among you. I want to stay with you. And you'll come to my kever. And, and Rabbi Nezal said, that in these words that Rabbi Nezal said, I want to remain with you, there's an incredible, incredible depth to that, what he meant by that. Especially at the time that he revealed the Tikkun Akloli, that was also around that time, where, where that was also said shortly before Rabbi Nezal passed away, and he said that any person who comes to his kever and gives a pruta tzedaka for his neshama and says these ten kapitel of Tehillim, he'll do everything possible to help that person. And he, and he took Adim, two witnesses, to, that in front of them to be able to give this haftacha. And, and Rav Nelson Zal says that the, the Talmidim of Rav Nezal, when they heard all of this, they felt terrible. They heard him saying that he's going, to be, he's going to be leaving the world shortly. He was 35 years old when he said this. And some of them asked him, but what, what's going to be with everything you told? Who are you leaving us for? And what's going to be with all the things that you told us that you want to bring us to a complete tikkun? You're going to finish our tikkun? And now suddenly you're leaving? And, and Rabbi Nezal was mechazik them. He gave them tremendous chizuk. And he said the most The most important thing is for all of my Talmidim to be united with tremendous Ahava. And then they definitely do not have to worry at all. Ki bevada yihiu ksherim vitzadikim kemoishu huroitze. Because we will definitely become religious people and tzadikim like Rabbi Nezal wants. The kind of tzadikim that Rabbi Nezal wants us to be. Vafilu mi sheye nil velohem v'yishapari mohem. And even a person who isn't mamish a breast lover, even a person who didn't learn this forum, a person who will attach himself to them, even though that person never saw Rabbi Nachman during his lifetime, he never knew him, he will also become ish kosher vitzadik. These were Rabbi Nezal's words. Ki be'ezras Hashem gomarti ve'egmor. Because Rabbi Nezal says, with Hashem's help, I succeeded in completing many things, and I'm going to complete. I'm going to finish everything I started and everything that I want to finish. And that was when he said those words, that my fire will continue to, to burn until Moshiach will come. And, and Rabbi Nezal also said that there were many great tzaddikim that started, they started a tikkun, they started perfecting things, but after they passed away, the things that they started terminated, it finished. They had Talmidim and everything, the Talmidim passed away, and, and that was it, finished, Gendik. And Rabbi Nezal said, I want to I wanna establish something in a manner that it will never stop. I want to make Talmidim, and those Talmidim will make more Talmidim, and it'll continue the way we see today. 200 years later, who could believe it? I remember again, when I came to Breslov 50 years ago, <clears throat> My father, when he found out that I was going to a breast of Shir, he said in Europe they were referred to as the Toite Hasidim, the, the dead Hasidim, because they, they don't have a Rebbe, so what, what, it's a joke. What's a Hasidus without a Rebbe? Now, now look what a Has What Rebbe can bring 60, 70,000 people to the worst place on earth, <laughs> the lowest, worst place on earth, Begashmias of Baruchnis, to Ukraine. On, for Rosh Hashanah, 
How many people would, if a per, you offered a person $25,000 to go to Ukraine, he'll laugh at you, spit in your, a joke, to go, uh, to leave my family, to go to Ukraine for you, crazy? But, but this Rebbe said so, this Toitoret said so, and tens of thousands of people who never saw him, they never saw Rav Nassim this, that, but they tasted a drop, the safer a little bit, and they're coming, they're going across the world with Mesiras Nefesh, each one with their own Mesiras Nefesh, to, to, to fulfill to the words of this tzaddik, who we don't see, we don't think. In addition, right before Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Nezal spoke to Rabbi Nezal, and he revealed to him the Torah Peivov in the second half of Likud Imran, where he speaks about that when there's a, a lack of emuna, then it requires fasting and, and difficult avoidance. And Rav Nosanzal was standing there looking, who, who is he talking to? He's, he's talking to me about lack of emuna, Because Rav Nosanzal knew that in all sincerity, his emuna was on the highest levels. And Rav Nosanzal said, Rav Nosanzal knew what he was thinking. And he said to him, if you have emuna in Hashem and you have emuna in the Torah, but you don't have emuna in yourself, you don't believe in yourself. And Rabbi Nizal quoted the Gemara, Mi goram le tzaddikim, kat nesemuna shoyubahem. And then if the, on Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Nizal included that message in this chapter in Likut Imran that we just learned, where he said that there are tzaddikim in the generation whose emuna is on a very high level, and yet we see that there's machloikis against them. And he said, why? Why is there machloikis? because they don't have emuna in themselves. They don't believe in their chidushe Torah, they don't believe, and through the machloikis, that's gonna push them. That's gonna push them closer to Hashem. That's gonna open their eyes. Through machloikis, sforim are generated. They're gonna write sforim, and then they're gonna, they're gonna have emuna in themselves. Also, during that same period of time, Rabbein Azal revealed chapter 211 of Likut Imran, where he spoke about one of the main reasons that people come to Tzadikim is for Hamtoka Sadinim. Because Rabbein Azal said on Rosh Hashanah is a special time, a person, it's called Roish, Roish Hashanah. And each person comes with his Roish, trying to think pure thoughts. Machshobois Kedoshois. And the Zohar Kodesh says, Kulhu b'machshava is bariru, that everything, everything gets its tikkun in machshava. And Rabbi Nezal said there that it's impossible for a person to be able to come to pure thoughts without attaching himself to the tzaddik. As the Zohar Kodesh says, on the Pasuk, Vayikach Moshe es atzmois Yosef. Moshe Rabbeinu, who represents machshava, Shin Mo, Shin is the three parts of the brain. Mo is three times Yud K. Moshe Rabbeinu is Das Moichin. Vayikach Moshe is Atzmois Yosef. He had to attach the Machshava to the Tzaddik to bring my head, to bring my Rosh on Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Bayis, to the Tzaddik who is called Rosh Bayis, the, the leader of the house. And that was, that's also included in this Torah of Ikut Imran. What Rabbi Nezal says that all the hamtokos of all tzimtzumim and dinim are through seichel. And then Rabbi Nezal in this Torah spoke about traveling to the tzaddik for Rosh Hashanah. Now Rabbi Nezal says that up until that time, Rabbi Nezal had not mentioned anything about publishing his Torah at all whatsoever. <clears throat> Just the opposite. He seemed to be implying that he didn't want his Torahs shown that his Talmidim should not show it to other people, that they should keep it in the family. And right after that Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Nezal traveled to Lemberg, and when he was in Lemberg, he sent a message to go ahead and print the Likut Imran, the first volume of Likut Imran, which was printed in that year, Tov Kuf Samaches. And from that point on, Rabbi Nezal started speaking about the tremendous chashivus of every Torah in Likut Imran and, and how much we should spend quality time learning the, learning the Sefer. And that's also included in this Torah Samach Aleph. 
where he quoted the Pasuk, Vesefer Kosav Ishrivi, that Machloikis causes Sforim to be written. And Rabbi Nezal said, there are many Sforim today, there are going to be many more Sforim, and we have to have Emuna. There are people who make fun, Nocha Sefer, another Sefer came out. We have to have Emuna in every single Sefer and to delve into it and to treat them with tremendous respect. And again, even the tzaddikim who, who have emunas chachamim, they have to be mechazek themselves and to believe in their own chidushe Torah and to treat them with respect. A person looks at the Agdoma Tolikute Alochais and the Agdoma Tolikute Imran, we know Rav Nosenzal considered himself nothing, nothing shebe nothing. But he writes in the introduction to Likut HaLochus, as far as me personally, based on myself, I'm nothing shebe nothing. But based on the teacher that I was zochet to learn from, based on the Rebbe that I was zochet to learn from, I can stand in front of kings. I can stand in front of anybody. Everyone has what to listen. That if I'm going to say what I heard from my Rebbe, there's nobody in the world who can't listen and won't benefit tremendously from these words. And Rab, Rab Nachman Sharin says now that based on everything we just said and based on what's going on here, <clears throat> it was clear that this chapter on Likut Imran was like a tzavo, a will, a last will and that Rab, Nos, that Rab was giving over to his students that were close to him. How he wants things to be after he passes away regarding how to come close to him. And he hinted to them that the most important thing is to be mischazek in emunas chachomim, be'emes, and not to deviate from the words of the chachomim to the right or to the left. And through this will be zoycha to draw, mish, to this our mishpat, our judgments will, will come to light. The yidden won't be prosecuted by the goyim, we won't, but on the contrary, the, the emes of Klal Yisrael, the emes will, will come to, will, will be shown and we'll be able to draw from the Torah to know how to conduct ourselves personally, how to conduct ourselves with others, how each how a person should conduct his family, how to speak to his children, how to speak to other friends, family members, which is the most important, one of the most important purposes of coming close to tzaddikim. And it's not enough, it's not enough to look into sforim. It's not enough to have just the sforim alone. As, as is the question of those people who are choylik on the concept of iskarvas at tzaddikim. Why do you have to go to a tzaddik? Why, you have the sefer. What do you need? Yeah, we have the Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the sefer. What do I need a tzaddik for? Because not, the reason is, because not every person who learns the Torah is able to draw mishpe, is able to get to the emes of the Torah. I, I saw an incredible chiddush. The Bnei Yisachar says something amazing. He says that for a person to be zoicha to the emes of the Torah is a higher level than Gilu Yelio Anavi. We know the Gemara says, Ashrei to the person, how, what a Madrega person has to be on to be able to see Elio Anavi in a dream. Or to see him when you're awake is a still higher Madrega. The Bnei Yisrael writes, for a person to be zoicha to the emes of the Torah is a higher madrega than Gilu Elianovi. How do we know? He says, the Gemara says in Gitten, I think Davov, Davzayim, that there was a Rebbe Vyosor. And Rebbe Vyosor met Elianovi and he spoke, the Gemara says, the whole, can't come, what, what went on between them. Then on Omad Beis, or the next staff, the Gemara says, Rebbe Vyosor said something. And, and how do we know what he's saying? Maybe he didn't hear, maybe he's not. You just told me a few minutes ago that he was talking to Elianovi. And you're not sure whether he learned the right pshat in the, in the Mishnah? He says, from here we see that for a person to be zoichet to the emes of the Torah, to the, I mean, is a higher madrega than Gili al <clears throat> So Rabbi Nachman Shirin writes here, that's why the Sforim alone, a person learns Gemara, a person learns Halacha, it's not enough. In order for the person to be zoichet to Birur Hamedame, to be able to take out the emes from the Torah, a person needs his skarvus to tzaddikim. He has to come close to the tzaddikim. Now 
question. Now that Rabbi Nachman is not physically with us, and all we have is the Sforim, doesn't that contradict what we just said? The answer is that in Torah Dalid, where Rabbi Nezal speaks about coming close to the Tzaddik, and he mentions three things there, going to see the Tzaddik, and giving stuck of the Tzaddik, and confessing in front of the Tzaddik, Reb Nachman Chirin on that Torah has a whole explanation where he says, how do we do this today? And he says, seeing the Tzaddik is through three things. The Sforim of the Tzaddik, like Rabbi Nezal says in Torah Kuf Tzaddik Beis, that Pono V'sichloi V'nishmosoi of the Tzaddik is in his Sforim. Number two is the Kever of the Tzaddik, especially the Kibbutz on Rosh Hashanah, which is the Hisparus, where every single person that's there is a piece of the Tzaddik. Reb Nachman Shirin used to look into the face of every single person that came for Rosh Hashanah, because was each, that's looking in Re'iyas Panei Tzaddik. And number three, he speaks about having Chaverim, having Chaverim Amitiyim. Reb Nachman Shirin writes on Torah Dalet there, speaking things over that whatever a person can talk to a good Chaver, Shua Baroi Vyoyetz, to speak to Talmidim of the Tzaddik, who know more than him, who are closer than him, that's also, the Gemara says, Chochma Sodom Toyer Ponov. You want to see who a Rebbe is, look at the Talmidim. So, so the, a, a Talmidim Amitim, those are three ways that we're Mekayim, this Indian of, of Re'iyas Pnei Tzaddik, and this piece of his Karvas to the Tzaddik. Three important Yesodos. Rabbi Nezal says in Torah Lamedalet, that you need, you need uh, the three, the, the Kesher to Hashem, the Nekudas Tzaddik, the Nekudas Chaver, and the Nekudas Atzmoy. Three, th- each one critical, each one critical. He says here again, Ki lav kolodom zoyche lohitzi. There are so many times, I had a question a few days ago. In Eretz Yisrael, somebody asked me a question. A group of women got together, and they were talking about his spiritus. And one of the women there said that she has an, an hour of his spiritus, and a woman is supposed to have an hour of his spiritus every day. And most of the women there were not nowhere near that madrega at all. And, and so the, one of the husbands asked me afterwards, is this true? Is a woman supposed to have an hour? When the Rebbe spoke about a kvias, a shoz, was he, did he mean the women also? And I said, to the best of my knowledge, the answer is no, no. He was talking to women have to be mispalo, koyach atfila, and their tefillah many times is better and much more powerful than men. Rabbi Nezal said, when you want to learn emuna, go to the women. But in terms of the chiyuv, of being koyveya ashov his poiridus, I never saw that by any of my rabbonim all the, in the past 50 years in Breslau. No such thing. A woman has d- d- different responsibilities, different things. She, again, her, her 15 minutes can be like a husband's 15 hours in terms of madrega, but to be mechayev them an hour, never saw that. Number one, never saw that. And again, that, that's not the Kabbalah that we have. And there's a, a danger in yomenu smoil, deviating to the right or the left. A person tries for too much and they don't realize that sometimes it's atzas hayetzer. The Yetzirah knows that the person cannot keep that up, and if they're going to try for something that's way beyond them, if they'll succeed in doing it for a short period of time, then they burn out and they have nothing, chas v'shem. person has to be very careful. And even for a man, again, I heard from my rebbe's all the time, people see Rabbi Yisrael's rights are an hour, they try it, impossible, have a nice day, I'm finished. You don't start like that. You start with 10 minutes. A person starts with 10 minutes and tries to make that a kvias, tries to work on that for a month, for two months. Three, and then afterwards, add another five minutes. Add an, slowly, gradually to grow, to try to get to the madrega of an hour a day, which is an incredible, incredible, it's an incredible madrega. I remember the first time when I was 16 years old, and I was introduced to Breslau, a friend of mine that brought me, and when he spoke to me about his spiders, he said, try it for three minutes, <laughs> three minutes. And I remember I went home at the time, and I went to my, my room in my house, and I sat down on the carpet on the floor, 
and the first time in my life that I'm going to be speaking to Hashem in English and my own words, not yet. And I remember I started talking and after 20 seconds, I looked at my watch, is it three minutes yet? And then after a minute, is it three minutes? I never knew three minutes could be such a long time. It felt like three, three hours. And then a few months afterwards, I remember doing it once for 90 minutes and I wasn't finished. Like there was still more to talk about. So I'm saying a person needs to know to, that there's a, the, a kvias to, to start, how to start and to know that there are aliyas and yuridos, that a person is not a robot, a person is not a machine. Rabbi Nezal himself said, that there were times he felt he can't do this anymore. And he stopped. He stopped for a day or two or three, and then he said, what am I doing? I, I, that, that's not gonna make it better. And he made a new aschol, a new beginning. I mentioned this many times that I, I heard from a, an incredible Breslava Chassid, a Dayan from Los Angeles, Rebbe Chanan Tauber. We were together for Rosh Hashanah 30 years ago, 31 years ago, and people were talking, how did you come to Breslov? <clears throat> And he said, I'll tell you how I came to Breslov. I was learning in yeshiva. I was learning Gemara, Halacha, solid, very, very good. I was a Masmid, and I was learning Sifrei Hasidus also. Everything strong. And then somebody showed me a Breslov Sefer, and I saw something that I didn't see in any other Sefer that I had ever seen. What is it? Eurydice. I saw that Rabbi Nezal speaks about Eurydice, that there are ups and there are downs. There are successes and failures in Avodah Hashem. And Rabbi Nezal speaks about his own Yeridus. He said he himself had Yeridus. That level of emes, I didn't see anywhere else. Didn't see it in any other place. That's what grabbed me. That's what made me realize that this is, this is so powerful, so powerful. If somebody is really showing me honestly what life is about and what coming close to Hashem is about, they're showing me the the, the Erev and the Boike, they're not, not just giving me half the story, giving me the whole story so I know what to expect and I know how to prepare myself. Any questions? Okay, just a few minutes more. And he says, Kilav Kolodom Zoyche Lohoitzi Mishpete Yemes Vamilis Yishor is Mashalim is form. Ukmoshim as out like the Gemara says, La Asuke Shmaitzo Eliba de Hilchesa Siato de Shmaya. Listen to this. These are the words of the Gemara that for a person to study Gemara, to study Halacha, and to be able to come out with the right answers, to be able to know what's the right decision, what's the right conclusion from this. The Gemara says that requires divine assistance. A person can be smarter and smarter and come up with the wrong answers. And another person who's less smart and more closely connected to Hashem, and that person comes out with the right answer. That person has a beer or They know what's, what's right and what's not right. Even though the other person with all of his smarts, he, he's able to give 20 proofs that this is right, with a, so you have it in the Gemara. You have sometimes a discussion in the Gemara, and somebody asks a question, a very strong question, and the Gemara says, Kashya. You have, so, you, so you have a question. You have a question, the halacha remains like this opinion. We're not even going to answer. There are different opinions, how we, how we interpret that. We're, we're not going to, either we're not going to bother as answering that question because it's insignificant, or we don't have to. The, the halacha still, re, what do you mean? But I asked a good question doesn't matter. Sometimes there's kashya and sometimes there's tyufta. Tyufta means that a question was asked and therefore it knocks out that opinion completely. We don't follow that, that opinion at all. And again, to be able to know all the rules of when and how, that, that requires a lot of learning and siyata dishmaya, divine assistance. As Rabbi Nezal said in this Torah, when he spoke about doye ko adoymi, Shehoya Odom, who was a great person, and he came out with the halacha that David Amelech doesn't qualify, he's not Jewish. Because his grandmother was Rus, who came from Moyov, so he's not Jewish. Who said this? An Av Bezdin said this. And the Av Bezdin made a terrible mistake. She'ein David Roy Lover Bikol, whereby the whole salvation of the whole Jewish people, Moshiach, 
is going to come from Dovra Melech. If this person disqualified Dovra Melech, he said he's not a Yid, then there's no tikva for Kal Yisrael. And for this reason, a person has to try very hard to come close to true tzaddikim so that they will lead the person in the right path. Each person, again, stressing that two people, two people come into a Rav. One person comes into a Rav and says, am I allowed to do this? He says, no, it's also. Another person five minutes later goes into the Rav and asks, am I allowed to do this? He says, it's a mitzvah. And then the two people meet and they say, and he sees him doing it. He says, you're not, why are you doing it? You're not allowed to do that. He says, yes, I am. It's a, what do you mean? I asked the Rav and he said, not allowed to do it. And I asked the Rav, which Rav did you ask? This Rav. We both, let's go in. What? There's two Torahs? The answer is definitely yes. Definitely yes. The definition of Tzaddik, when Moshe Rabbeinu was about to leave the world and he wanted somebody to replace him, so he said, Hashem said to him, Ish asher ruach boy. That to be Moshe Rabbeinu, to be a tzaddik hador, he has to understand every person's differences and to understand that for this person it's a mitzvah to fast and for this person he's not allowed to fast. If he fasts, we give him 39 lashes. And for this person it's a mitzvah to get up in the middle of the night and for this person it's not a mitzvah. If he does it, he'll get sick, he'll, 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 he'll drop his Yiddishkeit. To be able to judge, to be able to know how to apply the Torah to every single person. We know Rabbi Nizal told one of his students, he had one student who was a tzaddik, tremendous, and this student wanted to get up for chatzois, and he tried, he, could, he hired a goy, he paid a goy to come into his house to wake him up. <clears throat> and, and the goy would wake him up, and he'd, he'd go back to sleep again. And he tried everything, and he was getting terrible headaches. And his mother went to Rabbi Nizal to complain that she felt that her son is in a sakon. We're not talking about a 12-year-old boy here. We're talking about a, tza, a tzaddik. And Rabbi Nizal said to this Talmud, your chatzois will be 3, 3 a.m. He said this to one person only, that your chatzois is 3 a.m. And they said they knew in the base Medrash, when they saw him walk in, they knew it's 3 a.m. Because Rabbi Nezal understood that for him it's sakona, it's sofek pikuach nefesh, if he's going to try to get up at, at the chatzois, the, the real chatzois. So he said for you, again, a tzaddik of that caliber has the authority to say such a thing. Any questions? We'll hold it over here for now. And Mitzvah will continue from here. There's some very, very special, important things in this Paparoyz that we'll cover again in the next year. Wishing everybody a good Shabbos, a good Chodesh, a good Gedan Chodesh. Shabbos. All the best. I quoted the Shalah Shalah Hakadosh. She's called Shalah Shem Yom Adin. What were those? What were those special things? Torah, Tzedakah, Tefillah, and the, uh, the the fourth one I believe was enduring struggles, like going through struggles. The first two parshas, Shmoisha and Vaera, the Jews are are being enslaved and struggling and everything. In Boy Beshalach, they're crying out to Hashem. Yeah, those are the four things. I wanted to ask something.